Hi, I'm Andy Call, lead pastor at Church of the Savior. I'm joining you today from a garden. Of course, this isn't just any garden. Many of you will recognize this. This is Daffodil Hill in Cleveland's own Lakeview Cemetery. I'm joining you today because I want to think about this whole image of a garden that is so central to our faith. You know, the book of Genesis, the very beginning of the Bible, God brings life into being in the midst of a garden, and, and Adam and Eve are set in that garden. Throughout our, our scriptures, we find references over and over again to growing things, about, about how we're to grow our fields, how we're to plant, and how we're to harvest those fields, that, that the first fruits of, our, uh, of the labors that come from the ground are to be given to God as an offering of thanks. And in fact, the prophets tell us that, that there will be a time when, even in the midst of the most desolate circumstances, that God will bring new life like, like blooms in a desert. And, and so we find this message over and over again. And the scriptures tell us that in the fullness of time, God came to us in Jesus, who then carried on that theme and talked about growing things. He told stories like the parable of the sower and the soils, the parable of the wheat and the tares. And in one of, one of my favorite passages in all of the Bible is, is in the 15th chapter of John, when, when Jesus describes himself as the vine and we are the branches. And he says, so long as we remain connected to him and bearing fruit, we will have life. It's that image that we see over and over again at Church of the Savior, in the sanctuary and in the chapel, and in things like the plaster and the wood carvings and the iron work of, of the kneeling rail and, the, and the, the needle point of the kneelers and the, and the marble on the altar. It's that image that just reminds us that God is always bringing new life. It was later in a garden where Jesus prayed the prayer to God when he said, Not my will, God, but yours be done. In fact, after Jesus died, they placed his body in a tomb that was of all places in a garden, and it was in that garden where the resurrection story happened. Mary even mistook Jesus as the gardener. We don't know the exact relationship between John the Gospel writer and John the Revelator, but that last book of the Bible, Revelation, also doesn't end with the, some sort of uh, ending of the earth. It's actually a garden of all places, and, and it's in that garden that, that the story of the Bible concludes, but it really is just another new beginning. It's the next step of eternity. And in the middle of that garden is, is a tree. It reminds us of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. But this is the tree of life, and it's a tree to which all nations will come. It's a sign that God is constantly making all things new. Even what looks like an end to us is just a new beginning. So whatever you're facing today, whatever darkness is in your life, whatever anxiety you may be carrying, I hope that you will see signs of that new life that God is bringing, even in the midst of our circumstances, because God is always making all things new. Thanks be to God. Amen.